Hello, Jenny Hall here for Honeybee Stamps. Today I want to share the spritz watercolor technique. I'm creating a card with rainbow wishes, stamps, and die set. I'll also be using a piece of pattern paper from the log cabin paper pad. I'll also be coloring with the Magello Mission Gold watercolor set. This is my favorite watercolor set. To start the project, I'm going to stamp the small rainbow image in gray dye ink onto the bumpy side of a piece of watercolor paper. This watercolor paper happens to be Arches. It's a very good paper. It is available in the Honey Bee store and it will accommodate layers and layers of water. It will take more friction and more water and it just works beautifully. So I'm going to start out by choosing one or two of the reds and I'm going to add the red color down onto the outside bow of each one of the rainbows. And then I'll progress and add the orange and then the yellow, the green and the blue. It's a very small rainbow and it's not going to take up all of the RG bivs, but that's okay. For this technique, I basically want to just make sure that I've got some color that's going to show through. So after I have added in all of the colors to each one of the small rainbows, then I'm going to be using a spray bottle. I like to use the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer because it puts out a very large mist of water, like as in the area that it sprays. So I'm going to now take that mister and just give it a nice little spritz all over the paper. And then the colors are going to start to bleed together a little bit. Now it's going to look like a hot mess until we're finished, but by the time we're done, it's going to kind of look like stormy skies. So bear with me and we'll follow through and I hope you really like the end result. I'm using a cloth here just to pick up some of that excess color and remembering that red plus green equals brown. I don't really want to have any brown in my finished project, but I do want that hazy look. So once I've gotten all of the little rainbows spritzed and then kind of cleaned up in between, I'm going to use a medium to dark blue in between all of those areas. Now, did you notice that right before I started using the watercolors that I used my sprayer and I spritzed the whole palette down with water? That helps me to activate all of the watercolors. And once I'm done using them, it dries back up. And it, it is such a big help for me to be able to activate those colors and have them move around when I need it. And I make sure that when I'm finished, I just close the lid and store it completely flat so that no fluid will leak and go from one well to another. So now we've got a couple of different blues that are painted very loosely, very easy up against all of those little rainbows. This is where you can really see that using a good piece of watercolor paper is going to make the difference and it's going to take all of that water. It's like it's going to just take the abuse from my paintbrush and take all that water and it's gonna hold up so well. So if, if you have not yet tried any kind of really good watercolor paper, I would suggest you give it a go. And this would be a fun and easy technique that is almost no fail. So I'm going to use my cloth and I'm going to dab up the excess colors in between the stuff I've already just put down. And now you can see that it's starting to look a bit hazy, a bit stormy, a little cloudy, and also a little hopeful at the same time. 
Now to add some atmosphere, I've taken just a little dab of white acrylic ink, and this one is from Ranger, and a paintbrush, spritzed it with a little bit of water, and then I'm just tapping on all those little dots. I tapped them onto the wet paper, and it kind of pulls that, that white ink and disperses it a little bit, so it softens up. But I wanted to have some shine, and so I took some liquid pixie dust and did exactly the same thing on the dry on the dry paper. And it just has so much sparkle, it's gorgeous. Now I'm going to trim down and place that piece of paper from the log cabin paper pad that looks like stormy skies. And then I've added with some double-sided foam tape my watercolored panel on top of it. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment from the Rainbow Wishes stamp set. And this is what inspired the whole project. And the sentiment that says the about you're a rainbow after the storm just made me want to create a hopeful stormy sky. Because there are some times when I really need to send a card to somebody to thank them for getting my family through a very tough time. And I thought this would be just the perfect thing. So I have embossed the sentiment onto a piece of black cardstock in white, which really helps it stand out. And now I'm adding these little rainbow clay bits and they're like little color palettes that are rainbow and they really stand out. I thought using them would help the rainbow theme really stand up. And you can see there that my glue is in the rainbow glue holder. I've been asked to show that in the video by a viewer, and I tell you what, it's great for holding your, your glue upright. Thank you so much for joining us for another Honeybee Project.